All right, so today I want to do a little shopping for a Dinker ball python. You can actually go over to morphmarket.com and search for Dinker, and it'll bring up a bunch of ball pythons. And it's not really a gene per se. It's kind of an interesting concept. Essentially what it is is it's a normal ball python in a lot of cases with an unusual color and pattern that really can't be explained. Sometimes you can have other genes in the Dinker, but a lot of times you'll just have like normal classic wild types that are listed as Dinkers. And I'd say most people when they're buying into a Dinker project, they're kind of kind of digging for gold. A lot of people are kind of shooting for that brand new genes that's never been discovered before. And you never know. Some of these Dinkers, I'd say probably, I'd say most of them are actually imports from Africa. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll actually take the gravid females that are full of eggs. And before they lay eggs, they'll import them. And then once they lay eggs, they'll hatch the eggs. So it's kind of like a pseudo wild caught where you actually import the wild caught and then she lays eggs. And then you get like, a captive hatched hatchling and a lot of those can be really interesting dinkers from the wild so you never know what you're going to get with some of those crazy snakes from the wild and sometimes I'd say with, with ball pythons it's usually I'd say the, as, as far as the genetics in ball pythons it seems like there's a lot of random mutations where I've seen quite a few people just kind of breed two snakes together and then they just pop out something that is totally unexpected and brand new and a lot of times they prove it to be genetic and really awesome someone mix with other combinations you could just like pop out a brand new gene and then start breeding it it's it's pretty amazing in ball pythons i think that's really what keeps the ball python industry alive is all the brand new genes coming into the market so today i want to jump over the internet and i want to do a little shopping for a dinker ball python all right, so I'm going to jump over here at MorphMarket.com and I actually searched through all the dinkers over here at Morph Market, and I picked out the ones that I would probably invest in that probably have the most potential buying into a dinker project. And I'm actually going to start with a normal. This is what a normal looks like. And I actually looked through all the different normals too to pick out probably the most normal looking normal. There's a lot of no variabilities in normals. Some of them can be really bright and some of them can be pretty dark. And I'd say if you're kind of thinking about a normal, this is pretty much the color and the pattern that you'll find on a normal. A lot of times you'll have these like a Roswell gray alien head right here on top of the snake and usually it has a pretty black background. If you actually take a look at the head on the normal that's kind of an indication in a lot of these combinations that something's a little bit different. Usually the head is pretty black in normals and you kind of have the stripe right across the eye. Pretty normal looking head and a pretty normal looking snake. So take a look at this dinker. Take a look at that one and we'll compare that one to a dinker. Take a look at this this is an interesting dinker over here and this one's kind of interesting I haven't really seen anything quite like this this almost looks kind of like fire how it's, it's kind of a creamy color except it's a little more peach which is kind of an interesting anomaly and if you actually take a look at the top of the head it is pretty faded out it's kind of an interesting fading on the head and then if you actually look uh, between the alien heads you see a little bit of almost like flaming like a yellow belly so it almost looks like it has a whole bunch of different stuff going Going on as far as the color and the head stamp and the flaming and it's kind of interesting with these dinkers I've actually seen someone who I, I saw this table at a reptile show and the guy's like yeah I, I found this dinker and I proved it to be genetic and he bred it into a whole bunch of stuff and in this whole table full of this brand new gene I can't even remember what the gene was and he said for some reason people won't buy my new gene and I think the, the problem is is you have to prove it's genetic and then you have to prove it's really visually impressive when you mix it in with other genes and that's kind of the sticking point as far as trying to sell your new gene to kind of the ball python community and sometimes I've actually seen genes where they don't look really impressive breeding it to you know like 10 or 20 or maybe 30 genes and then several years down the road maybe 10 or 20 years down the road someone actually takes that gene and breeds it into something like a clown combo or something that makes a really amazing clown combo and then all of a sudden that gene is just like explodes and there's a mad rush to buy that gene and the prices skyrocket and the, the pretty much the supply dries up. It's kind of interesting. Some of these genes, especially if you go over to Morph Market, you see a whole bunch of different genes that have just a few examples that aren't really that popular. And I think people kind of buy into dinkers, spin them out into new genes, and then have a hard time trying to prove that they're really impressive, even though that they can show their genetics. So that's another thing working with dinkers. It has to be, you know, you have to actually have a selling point where people will buy into that project to breed it into some of their other combinations. 
So take a look at this one. I thought this was one of the more interesting ones. This is actually a wild type yellow belly. So this is this is really interesting because this is essentially you can actually find quite a few snakes over here that kind of have this yellow belly appearance. And a lot of times the yellow belly almost looks like a normal ball python. And usually this has a really strong yellow belly influence across the belly. You usually have this really busy pattern on either side of the belly, almost like checkering or kind of like a really busy, like a, almost like a broken up head pied marker which is kind of interesting you can definitely tell there's something going on with this dinker and kind of the cool thing is if you actually take two yellow bellies and breed them together this is what you get you get an ivory so the yellow belly is pretty awesome and kind of the interesting thing about that specific snake is it, it actually has the markings of a yellow belly but not just the yellow belly has those markings you can actually have any of the genes in the yellow belly complex that also have those markings so you can actually have the gravel or or the asphalt or the spark or the yellow belly and they all kind of have a busy pattern like that and they're all allelic complexes so it's not necessarily just a yellow belly it could be like a brand new gene in the yellow belly complex that would be the ultimate potential of buying that dinker with kind of that yellow belly looking pattern on the belly and here's one of the, the potentials if you actually got something like that say it turned out to be an asphalt and you bred it with a yellow belly this is what you could potentially end up with take a look at this this is a banana enchi. This is essentially this is a banana Mardi Gras, which is the banana, the enchi, and the freeway, which is the asphalt and the yellow belly. So it could technically be like asphalt or something like that, or something similar, or maybe something brand new, which would be really awesome. You could start popping out snakes like this. And let me tell you, that gene would explode. It would definitely take off. So I thought this one was kind of interesting. I actually came over here. This is an import captive hatched. Togo Dinker, which is a mouthful. Essentially what it is, is it's one of the females that they brought over here that was gravid, full of eggs, and then it laid eggs over here after they imported it, and then they hatched the eggs, and then this became one of the captive hatch hatchlings. And the reason a lot of people do that is if you actually catch a snake in the wild, for some reason, a lot of the original ball pythons that were captive bred were really difficult to feed. For some reason, trying to transfer them from eating in the wild to eating in captive Activity is extremely difficult and kind of the way to get around that is to actually catch something that's already grabbing to full of eggs in the wild and then have it lay the eggs and then hatch them out as a matter of fact I think over in Africa it's, it's pretty common practice where they'll catch the gravid females and then after they lay the eggs they'll let the female go back into the wild which is kind of interesting and they'll the, everything they have is kind of like a captive hatched hatchling which is kind of an interesting concept so if you actually take a look at this thing the kind of the interesting thing about this is on top it looks almost like a normal ball python but if you look at the belly it has a really crazy belly pattern coming right down the bottom of the belly most ball pythons have a clear belly with hardly any pattern right in the middle most of them are completely clear and there's actually one gene that I've seen that has a crazy belly pattern like this and take a look at this this is actually the confusion gene and the confusion gene has this crazy <laughs> kind of a weird kind of thing coming right down the belly sometimes it can be kind of jumbled now that almost looks exactly like a confusion and to kind of show you the potential of the confusion I pulled up this one take a look at this this is the firefly which is the fire and the pastel which is a really awesome combo and here's what happens if you take the firefly and you work in confusion take a look at this crazy snake that is pretty awesome as a matter of fact confusion is one of the projects I want to get into but if you actually go back and take a look at this so if we, if we, if we actually look at the prices so this is a confusion yellow belly selling for two thousand dollars which is kind of crazy these are really expensive i'd say probably the cheapest confusion i've ever seen here in 2020 is like maybe you know fifteen hundred dollars or something like that and if you actually go over here and look at this this is the import dinker look at how much the import dinker is 50 bucks that is pretty amazing and if you can actually prove this out to be maybe a little bit different but just as you know awesome as in combinations as you know the confusion stuff like that you can make you can you know you can pretty much hit a gold mine taking this and breeding it out of the other combos a lot of times you know people will see a lot of these combinations and i'd say probably 99 percent of the time this is probably not going to be genetic and a lot of times you're just kind of you know going down a rabbit hole chasing the dinkers so i always think you know it's, it's good to have kind of your main breeding project is, is kind of what you you know you definitely make some money on some of the stuff that you know you're going to breed like you know breeding some 
of pies and clowns and stuff like that. And then maybe on the side, pick up a couple dinkers, kind of roll the dice and see if you can pop out something brand new. So take a look at this one. This is kind of interesting. This is actually, they're calling this a track belly dinker. So this is kind of interesting. This is a, a pretty much just a, a normal ball python and it has these interesting tracks right down the belly. As a matter of fact, uh, I think the, the description of this one, they said it was, uh, I think it was an import or a wild caught. Uh, let's see. Uh, just says dinker so some of these you can actually it's kind of interesting some of them they have a story down you know kind of in the comments where they got it from if it's captive hatched or you know an import from the wild or if they just kind of randomly popped it out and usually with these tracks what this is this is usually het pied markers so take a look at this this is what you normally see on a head pied I'd say well I'd say it's, it's a, you know, I'd say maybe one in four snakes maybe have these these markers right along the belly these head pied markers and sometimes I'd say you know I pretty much every time I've seen these markers it's pretty much always been head pied but a head pied doesn't always have the marker so it can be a little tricky so if you actually breed two head pieds together essentially what you get is you get a pie this is what a pie looks like really amazing combination and you never know what you're gonna get on some of those dinkers if you'd actually pop out some pies or maybe it's a marker for a brand new gene which would be pretty amazing a lot of these, this is actually a recessive, so you need two copies of the gene for a visual. So on that one, I'd say with the belly tracks, it looks like it could be head pied, it could be another recessive, which would be pretty awesome. So take a look at this one. This is actually an African import dinker. And if you actually take a look at the pattern on this, this is really banded, which is really interesting. It's, it's actually pulled up another snake here that I think is pretty similar to this. It's actually called the Calabash reduction gene, which is kind of interesting. There's another one, there's the genetic banded, which is also similar. And both the KRG and the genetic banded are kind of interesting where there's not a whole lot of them that have been produced over here in Morph Market. And especially with the KRG, it seems like there's a lot of potential. I've actually seen someone working it into a clown, which is pretty awesome. So I think this is one of the kind of one of the ones that are kind of hidden in Morph Market. Not a lot of people know about the KRG. And I think even just this one has a lot of potential. And the KRGs aren't really that expensive. You can pick up, you know, a KRG for 300 So I've actually seen a lot of imports that look really similar to the KRG. So here's another one. This is kind of interesting. This is listed as a dinker het pied, which is kind of interesting. You can actually take a look, kind of this weird, crazy pattern on the side of this. It actually kind of shows the breeding on this one. This was actually from a cinnamon pastel chimera yellow belly pied, which is a whole bunch of genes. And then they bred it and then popped out this crazy thing. And what I'm thinking this, you know, sometimes you kind of scratching your head thinking, well, what is going on with this? And I think what this could be this could actually be a visual pie just a really low white pie sometimes you can get pies that almost have zero white sometimes they have no white at all just kind of random sometimes you can get a high white and sometimes you can get a low white and i'd say this almost looks kind of like a pastel pied or maybe a pastel yellow belly pied. And I actually pulled up a pastel yellow belly pied over here, take a look at this. This is kind of what it looks like, almost similar, but I'd say most of the times that I've seen over here on Morph Market, the pastel yellow belly pieds or even the pastel pieds usually have this really strong stripe right down the top of the snake, which gives an interesting appearance. If you actually go back and look at this one, it doesn't have that stripe, which is really a curious effect in this particular snake. And I've actually seen a lot of people say that if you just produce a regular het pie, just one copy of the pie gene, sometimes it can really scramble up the pattern and give you some busyness on the sides. But I've never seen anything as extreme as this. So I just definitely say this is a dinker and there's definitely something going on with this snake. So take a look at this one. This is actually a, a captive hatch dinker. This is kind of an interesting, interesting appearance on this one. You can actually see on this one, it has a really strong line right down the top of the back. And look at the pattern on the side from the alien heads. It kind of jumbles it up. Almost looks like kind of wiped out like a cinnamon would be or something like that. Kind of crazy. And if you actually look at the head, it's pretty light. And they actually have kind of an interesting story down here. This is, if you actually read the story, uh, this hatched out uh, of, of 
of a clutch of six from an imported gravid female. So they actually imported the female, the female laid eggs, and she, they hatched out six snakes. The female looked pretty normal, but all six offspring came out looking like this, which is really interesting. So to me, this almost seems like it's genetic. Maybe it came from a super, you know, who knows what the super form of this looks like crawling around in the wild. You know, you never know what you'd find out in the wild. And maybe that one bred to the this, this female that we actually hatched this from, and it looks like this could be one copy of maybe a co-dominant gene, which is pretty interesting. I actually pulled up a snake over here. The closest thing I could find as far as something crazy like this, I actually found this one. This is the Super Blackhead, and the Super Blackhead kind of has the same kind of a wiped out pattern on the side, maybe a little bit of striping. I'd say most of the Blackheads have a really open back and a really Super Blackhead, so it's definitely not a uh, super black it's not a, I don't think it's a black head either so I'd say as far as a visual appearance this is the only thing I can think of that is even close to this one which is pretty amazing I would definitely invest in this one if you actually look at the price on this one so $400 let me tell you you know for $400 that is an expensive normal if you can't prove it to be genetic and some of these are a really big gamble sometimes you'll see some crazy patterns and people are like oh yeah this is something I'm gonna sell it for a thousand dollars and people buy it risking a thousand dollars and come to find out I've actually seen people spend a lot of money, sometimes thousands and thousands of dollars on these dinkers and then breed it and breed it and breed it and never prove to be genetic, which is kind of, it ends up being a dead end project and you kind of have all that money, but you never know. It's kind of like rolling the dice and digging for gold with a lot of these dinkers. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Gatlar28 asks, how old does a ball python have to be before you breed them? And that is a very good question. I'd say most of the times, most people will say that males have to be at least one year old and females have to be at least two years old. And I'd say most of the times it comes down to the weight of the ball python. For males, usually it's at least 500 grams. And for females, they generally say you should wait until they're at least 1500 grams. Well, let me tell you, I actually bred some snakes that were a little too young and I probably wouldn't breed them that young. I'd probably wait a little bit longer. Probably what I'd do is I'd wait until the males are two years old and the females are three years old because you can actually pair up some snakes especially if you're using that male to breed to some established females sometimes it can be a really big gamble so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video